Okay, so there's kind of an unusual story about how I became an immunologist. So I became interested in Huntington's disease during my postdoc um, fellowship time. When I arrived here in 1977, I began working on squid. I was just fascinated how um, this gene manipulations, how to do cloning and, and move genes around. And in 1981, all the squid disappeared, so I was left squidless. It's a great feeling to discover new things, to discover how biology works. I think it's really the families. Having met the families and people who are affected with this disease, it really motivates me to work on it. There's a kind of an excitement that goes with trying to find things out for the first time. Multidisciplinary research at UCI I think is a huge strength. Um, you know, as I've been to other institutions, it's really quite remarkable here. So what I've found here over the years is that UC Irvine really provides the ideal collaborative environment for taking basic science and moving it all the way into translational discovery kind of research. We would never be able to generate the lines from HD patients that we've been able to generate without the help of some of, of the people here like Leslie Locke and Peter Donovan and Hans Kirstead who work on stem cells. All the colleagues are very eager to interact and try new things and it's really important to discover new pathways uh, to patient care or translation. Uh, so interactions with, with um, different disciplines is incredibly important. Previously I really was a, primarily a basic scientist, just to discover things was very satisfying, uh, teach students was satisfying, uh, but uh, I became more interested also to do something that could directly be translated into the patient care. It's the possibility that one day the work that you discover is going to be applicable to human disease, to treat human disorders like autoimmune disease in our case. Knowing the families and caring about them and the disease that has helped us in terms of discovering new ways to treat the disease is that we always have in the back of our minds what the disease looks like. It is possible, for example, if these uh, molecules that we try to develop uh, could really restore P53 in tumors, uh, there would be a tremendous uh, impact on patients because you have to remember that there's about 500 cancer patients dying in America every day uh, with mutations in P53, so there could be a dramatic impact on, on cancer care. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about. You know, just if we do a little bit more, if we try a little bit harder, that it might help. And it, you know, sometimes it comes at a lot of personal sacrifice, but it, it really makes a big difference and, and it completely motivates what we do.